Good morning, everyone. A little different backstop today. Taking the, uh, making the video here outside in front of my barn. Well, one of my barns, anyhow. Now, uh, there may be a, a few violent swings of my hand or, uh, or, uh, random swearing because there's bugs all over the place and I'm sure they have already found me. So, black flies. <laughs> there we go. Okay, uh, two knives today, all right? Uh, one that you've seen before. Uh, quite a few different times here is the uh, my uh, my classic frontier pattern knife. Okay, there goes another one. Um, this is this is just the uh, the ultimate in traditional type knives. Okay, for outdoorsmen, um, it does everything. Okay, it's got a drop point. It's good for hunters. Uh, big enough, thick enough, and heavy enough blade for uh, bushcraft guys and uh, survival things. Uh, people like that that want to be able to, to really work their knife if they have to. Okay. And again, I don't I don't recommend batoning, but this this knife can handle it. Okay. This one also is in uh, Gunstock Tiger Maple, and I have the uh, four brass pins on it. A really popular knife. This is a double order actually. Both of these knives here. <clears throat> Damn bugs! Uh, both of these knives are uh, spoken for. They are ordered from a uh, from a single customer. A uh, good customer actually is already on his third knife, I believe now for me. Anyway, the other one here, which is not as popular, but is is really a, really a cool shape. Now, the history on this one. Okay, this first of all, this is the. Uh, old pattern woodsman field knife okay and again i've made a video on this before probably about a about a year ago i guess i made i made that video and and again that's in gunstock tiger maple um the creation of this knife when i first made it i had a piece of steel that just it wasn't too long it wasn't too wide and i just decided that i was gonna freehand the knife out of it and and this is what it came out, out to be. Now, I had a couple of thoughts in my head, you know. Uh, this, of course, has got the Kephart uh, handle type style right here where it um, catches your finger, catches your hands there just in case you go, you know, or to slide up above the blade. Um, really popular, uh, you know, the Kephart style, of course, but really, really a good safety feature on these. And the blade is kind of a traditional um as far as far as that upsweep goes there right there okay it looks a little bit like a kepar it looks a little bit like a nesmuk looks a little bit like those old-fashioned uh, butcher knives they used to use anyway that's what it came out to be and uh while not as popular as my other styles here it is it is uh it's a good seller and i've sold a ton of them and in fact i have quite a few on order now um one other thing about these knives that i've been um, I haven't said too much about in the past here is that um, these are these are completely hand forged by me here in my shop in Vermont not in that barn but the one over there so uh, what I do is I find I, I either buy the stock at a thicker thicker thickness okay thicker thickness a thicker piece and uh, while some of the guys they'll take they'll take a piece of steel <clears throat> that they buy at the thickness that they already uh, want the knife to be and then they uh, have a pattern draw a pattern on it and and they either grind it to stop to, to the size or whatever they do and and then grind the bevels that's called stock removal we have talked about that just a little bit before but I believe in forged knives okay which is what my knives are they take I take a, a thicker piece of steel and I I hammer it down, <clears throat> excuse me, I use my power hammer to get to the thickness that I want, uh, roughly to the thickness, and then I hammer the shape and the thickness out by hand on my anvil. I believe that that causes the structure to be much more dense, the steel structure, and a much, much stronger knife. Um, just like forged parts on a, on a, a car or other different uh, manufacturing processes, it's a common knowledge that forged pieces are stronger than cast or or just you know as i say the type of, of knife where they 
use stock removal. Not trying to bash anybody here. Those are good knives. I'm sure they're, you know, they certainly hold up. But I believe a forged knife works and will hold up better in the long run. And what I do on the edge here, okay, on the bevel, I purposely hammer those bevels in. Of course, they are ground to finish and everything. But I hammer the bevels in, and there's a way of doing that. It's, it's called um, packing the steel. And what that does is, again, it even it makes that edge, the beveled edge, even more dense and strong and and will hold an edge better. Okay, it's the whole thing. The knife's got to be strong, and it's got to be able to hold an edge for a long time, which my knives do. Okay, so that's about it for me rambling on about forging. So, uh, we have lots more knives coming here. I've got some new ones that nobody has seen yet and uh there'll be a lot more videos so please um like and subscribe to my channel here if you would helps us out we're growing nearly every day here on this channel um best thing to do if if you'd like to have one of my knives is either uh call me here at the shop all my information is here on on my uh, page or even better join my wait list and request a knife that you'd like to have. There's all the uh, particulars on there you can put in. Uh, my wait time is, is quite a bit right now, but I do make up one or two knives a month extra. Uh, so uh, that will be, you'll be notified by email uh, if you join the wait list of those knives when they come become available. Okay, so I guess that's about it for now. And uh, we really appreciate everybody watching. Uh, this is, uh, this is a, quite the adventure for me here getting a youtube channel going we've been doing that for over a year now really putting some effort into it so we'll see where all this goes and we'll catch everybody in the next one thanks again for watching